I would I used to I also joined in nineteen seventy one see seem to be so many of us who joined in nineteen seventy one uh, from all over the world and yet Prabhupada was kind of intricate in each place. Because Prabhupada came to Australia I think in seventy and uh, he went, to, he went to Sydney first, I think, yeah, he even went to Sydney, he went to Sydney first just with Bali Madan, and he spoke in the Wayside Chapel, which is just around the corner from where I live now, just, and Bali Madan did the first Kirtan in King's Cross in Sydney. And, um, but then, the next time Prabhupada came, he also <coughs> went out to Melbourne, where I was doing. And um, I didn't I didn't know Prabhupada was coming until I saw it in the newspaper in the age. They had a picture of Prabhupada in Sydney, again sitting at the airport all alone. Nobody with him. Nobody had come to meet him except the media. So because they were all they got his telegrams used to get times running, like planes changed and things like that. Anyway, nobody was there. And I was at the temple. Um, oh no, sorry, that's another one. And so that when Prabhupada, so I knew Prabhupada was coming to Melbourne, so I rushed to the temple and I got to see him there. I saw Prabhupada there and I also went out on a program that we went and Prabhupada preached to all these Trappist monks. And we were all sitting at the tables and we all took Prashad. Prabhupada let us eat and he offered all the food for Krishna grapes and honey and milk and all these things that monks put on. And I was a long hair hippie. The other thing was that um, my friends, there were a group of us, and ten of us all became the brothers. Like a small group of maybe fifteen, ten of us became devotees. So we asked Prabhupada, somebody asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, how is it that all of us from one small group of people here in Melbourne all became devotees? And Prabhupada said, it's the same that the devotee was saying last night, um, he said, My Guru Maharaj, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he, he put you all in these places, he spread you all around the world so that you could assist him with his preaching. So that really touched my heart. You know, I thought, wow, I'm, I'm actually already invited. <laughs> and so then, I joined actually the day after Prabhupada left on my visit and I moved into the temple. And by the next time Prabhupada came, which was just um, just one year later, I was I'd opened the temple, I'd been sent to I was fixed up after two or three weeks and he sent me to open the temple in Adelaide. That's kind of the way it used to happen. <laughs> and so I was the temple president after a couple of months in Adelaide and uh, we just had a small centre there. Um, just two of us went to open it, and we had we made we made two devotees, and then we had Kirtan. One devotee was a beautiful singer, so he used to just walk up and down the city singing. Another devotee was an amazing book distributor, so he used to sell books all over. I was the temple president, and we had a cook, and we made so it was a pretty quiet little team. And then we made about six or seven devotees by the time Prabhupada came back. Yeah. So we all went over to Melbourne. Um, just by chance that I was a temple president, I somehow got a lot of association with Prabhupada, which turned out to be very intimate and um, I don't know, I just it's just Christian Prabhupada's total mercy, but Prabhupada was giving a talk in Melbourne that we with the voters have gone out and advertised in a big, big way and 4,000 people came to the, to the Melbourne Town Hall. It was, it was this fabulous poster of Prophet on the side of the know, preaching Europe. It was called He Sees God. So people came from everywhere. It was packed, it was packed with Christians, all sorts of people came. They came from everywhere to see Prophet. Anyway, Somehow or another, I was given a set of Prabhupada's clothes and told him that I used to have a problem with him. 
So we can wheel it into the back of the hall, into the dressing rooms, which I think it was a magnificent hall and had magnificent dressing rooms. And Prabhupada was a night open and Prabhupada sat down on the couch and he had a very crumpled up dhobi and curtain on. He had his, it was very cold, so he had this massive fluffy sweater, which he loved. <laughs> Obviously he loved the sweater, so. We were sitting there, we chanted Java for a few, few minutes together, and then Robert said to me, Do you think I should change? And I had this set of suits there, and I was beautiful and great. And I said, Yes, Robert, I think so. So, right in front of me, with those big mirrors, it's a beautiful room with all these fabulous, you know, you could, it's just a magnificent setting. And Robert stood there, and we were seen Chad change. A really extreme situation. He had his old day and he just put on the new one over the top of it, kicked away the other one, and the same thing he just said. The way he took his coat, everything was majestic. You know, I was sitting there just watching, I was just enthralled. Here I was in the first contact with my guru, and he's sitting there getting undressed and changing the coat. And so I was totally uh, absorbed in this, and, and then Prabhupada. He finished it off, he put his little new thing there and he turned around and he looked at me and he turned around and he said, How do I look? <laughs> and I said, Prabhupada, you look magnificent. And then he said, Don't lose the sweater. So, <laughs> did. so as we were going up onto the stage, and then we sat down, Prabhupada sat on the gas and he wanted to be right near him so he could lose that sweater. So I sat there right next to Prabhupada and he was on the other side, he was just right there. And I looked around and I looked at the crowd and the crowd was packed. And there in the front row was my mother. <laughs> and I'd never told my mother I was going to become a devotee. She'd obviously heard about it. And she had with her her sister, who was a nun in the Catholic Church, you know, so she had the whole beard and the whole set up sitting next to my mother, so they came to check out my guru. So my mother was there, I saw my mother and I said, Prabhupada, my mother's there. And he said to me, he made that he asked me, I want to meet him. Right? Afterwards. So then Prabhupada, the kirtan was going on, and then Prabhupada's talk, he gave a magnificent talk. I mean, it was just mind blowing. Everybody was just absorbed in it. And then there were some questions, and then um, Prabhupada said, All right, chant Hare Krishna. And the kirtan started again. And Prabhupada um, turned to me and he said, Bring your mantra. So I went down, I, got, I said, Well, now Prabhupada wants to meet you. And the stairs up the stage. And my mother came up with the nun behind my hand. <laughs> <laughs> and they came right up to Prabhupada and Prabhupada looked at my mother and he said, you have a very nice son and a big smile on his face. And she said, well I have nine more. <laughs> <laughs> and Prabhupada laughed and she laughed and Prabhupada said, we will take them all. <laughs> and my mother kind of thought that was a good way out of all the problems of my children. <laughs> She totally agreed with it. And so that was really, my mother just got so blessed because she offered all the children. And uh, I was very happy then with that. So Prabhupada, then we went back and of course I had a sweater and uh, I took that sweater. So that was like my first introduction to Prabhupada. And then Prabhupada said that you know I knew something about hot and cold. Right? Robert used to work out who was the kind of get you guy in the temple. There were certain things he needed. And many devotees of Yas, if he spoke to them, they kind of just got stunned. I don't know. He didn't to work too much with that. So anyway, he, he rang the bell one day. I was staying in Prabhupada. Prabhupada was staying at Ugastrava's house, which was like two kilometers from the temple. And I was staying there too. Well, there's a first, another, another incident that happened. And so the first night we stayed there, we slept there. We had one room 
the mother who is uh, Swami and um, and Satsuru is there too, Swami and we're all sleeping on the floor in this room. Well, we just had our sleeping bags and prop a beautiful room where they cover all the floor with um it's staple kind of uh, all the sheets all over the house. So the whole house was like white sheets. I don't really like that look, but it's such he, he came into our room, it was like, it must have been about 4 o'clock in the morning. And I woke me, I saw a pop, and I had my bags, and I was banging on Mother Lisa's feet, and I said, Mother Lisa, Mother Lisa, wake up. I said, Robert's here. I said, yeah, yeah, Carlton's always up, don't worry, he's not girl. I said, no, he's here. <laughs> and Mother Lisa then saw a pop, and he made faces, and Robert, Prabhupada was just, it was like a, he was just gliding. It looked like he wasn't even touching the ground. He was just gliding around the room. And we had paintings like this, or the, the first prints that had been made. Prabhupada was going from one to the other. And then he turned and he said to us, I just wanted to see how you do. <laughs> and, then, um, and then he glided out again after seeing his paintings. So, um, and then uh, I was also with Prabhupada. Ugrishra was led Prabhupada's famous house, and I was also the assistant driver of Prabhupada's car. Ugrishra was the main driver. And Ugrishra used to get these amazing opportunities because sometimes Prabhupada would just say to him, Is the car there? And Ugrishra would say, Yes, Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, Let's go for a drive. And so Uncle Strava would get with Brahma all by himself and he'd drive all the earth and he used to take Brahma and he said it. Once I was driving down the freeway and Brahma said, Is this as fast as it goes? Brahma had said it. And Uncle Strava said, Oh no, Brahma. Brahma had said it. So he, he just put his foot down on the accelerator and he was going faster and faster and faster. And we looked at it and said, that's enough. <laughs> it's going over 100, 100 miles an hour or something. So Prabhupada did like a bit of speed. But then, getting back to that time when Prabhupada was in his room, oh, this must have been when he was in, no, it was a late visit. Prabhupada was in his room and uh, he was sitting, he was in the bed and he had the sheets pulled right up to here, right? And Diving out his nose, and he rang the bell. And I came into the room, and God, I said, God, what was there enough to go? He just went like that, and I said, Are you cold, God? And he said, And I said, um, Do you want me to get the uh, the heat out? And he said, I said, Because it was a kerosene heater. <laughs> and he said. Um, and I said, is it too smelly for all here? And I said, um, what about the blow heater for all that? And he said, and I said, too noisy for all that. He said, <laughs> and I said, I know of a heater for all that makes no noise and no smell. And he lifted his hand and he said, ah, that is wanted. <laughs> so I went immediately to the treasury pinched the money out of the treasure, I must admit. All the money, and I went in to buy a store, with it. it's called Maya, and I stayed the store. They had these huge big ray heaters. Just plugged them in, they gave ray heaters. So I was like, put it back to Prabhupada. And uh, he was very, very happy with that. So that was a couple of times I know I made Prabhupada happy, but one time later on when I was Public Relations for Australia. And um, Prabhupada, if you follow those letters, Prabhupada was always pretty disturbed about the way they portrayed the moon landing in Athens. So if you go through, there's so many opportunities in Prabhupada's books, but in his books and also in books about him, where Prabhupada was going about the moon landing. So I knew this was very dear to Prabhupada. And in Australia, I think it was the sixth or seventh anniversary of the moon landing so-called moon landing, and they put an article on the paper, anniversary of moon landing, what do you think 
you know, so I wrote, so they often people who write in, so I wrote this land to say, to move land into homes, it never really happened, because on the moon, according to the Bible down, there are, it's a beautiful heavenly place, and there are beautiful lakes, and, dam and you know, forests, and beautiful places, and there are all these gorgeous damsels there, this a fragrance that smells for Haiti, Yojanas, and what. Well, so I quoted the Bible time. I wrote this letter. But anyway, this is one uh, journalist in Australia, his name is Philip Adams. And he was famous for being an atheist, very famous atheist. And he would, he used to, you know, like devastating religious philosophy, you know, from Rip and Park. Anyway, He'd written this big, it was a huge broadsheet paper, it was two pages of it, and it was, it was the main feature in the newspaper, and it had Moon Hoax Exposed Thanks to Hare Krishna. <laughs> and there was a fabulous big cartoon of, as if it was the moon, but it was Prabhupada's head, and they did this perfect caricature of drawing Prabhupada in the sky, and over his nose and everything. And, and the men on the moon, they had all their gear on, and the little pigs and things, and they were looking, they were, trying, they were following Prophet's tear like that. <laughs> like Prophet's head was the moon. And, um, and they were like, Prophet loved it, apparently. He just loved and loved. And I saw that. And they quoted my whole letter, and then this Philip Adams went through kind of making out like he totally agreed with it, right? Of course, he was all tongue-in-cheek, all his articles were like, kind of saying one thing and being another thing. The prophet said, no, he really means it. He really does believe the moon land. It was a hoax. So, Robert was really happy with that because it was the first time that we'd been linked with the expose of the moon hoax. There was no internet in those days. Like if you Google Moon Hoax now, a million articles about it. But when that was the first one, so I probably was very pleased with that one. So, um, and now I satisfied it with that. And, um, do you want me to finish your five minutes? Um, once we were on a morning walk, we're on the way to the morning walk. This is, this is where a prop had actually gave me my life's instruction because um, we were sitting in the car, we were was driving, I think, such a was in the passenger seat, and I was in the back of the prop car, and we're going to the garden. And as you walk along, along the gardens, there's this part of Melbourne where you know, all the highest class business offices are all along there near the garden. But all the people marching off to work, and they all had their suits on and dressed up, really intelligent, working class people, very successful looking. And I was sitting next to Prabhupada, and Prabhupada was looking out the window, and I was looking out the window too, we passed Prabhupada. And I remember I was thinking, oh, was, all these poor people, they think they're, they're really important, but I'm here to make sure of that, and I'm the, the most, I'm with the, purest devotee in the entire universe. And, and, and I was thinking like that. And then Prabhupada, he turned around and he, looked in, he turned around and looked at me and he had tears streaming down his eyes. And, his and I just saw the compassion in Prabhupada's eyes. He'd been looking at the same people. Whereas I was thinking proudly and Prabhupada was thinking totally compassionately. And then he said to me, how can they be saved? How can they be saved? Because he had us, he had the hippies, we, you know, he just chant Hare Krishna and the hippies had seen. And we were all joined like anything, but he wasn't getting to those educated people who were, you know, um, probably were more running the society than us. We didn't have much pull in society. We probably had one of those people, so. But from that exchange, you know, that's been my last meditation. How to get these people, those who 
Watch in and dance in the streets where there's toes in the you know. And so, you know, that's... The Guru, somehow, he always lives in my life. I hope I live each one of us somehow in my life. Really wonderful. And uh, I just feel very, very fortunate that I've got so much association. I didn't used to think that I actually got a lot of association with Prabhupada. When I hear from all of my God brothers, there are actually many opportunities where we've got to spend time alone with Prabhupada. Even here in Vrindavan, once I got a personal darshan with Prabhupada in his room to hear why Harry saw his grace and Harry saw his life things and all. So I got a lot of mercy from him and in Australia, I really have my association, first association with Prabhupada. So I'm sorry if I talk too long and uh, thank you very much for this very much. Oh, by the way, my name is Chitta Haridas. Thank you very much, Chitta Haridas, for telling us so many nice stories about children.